HBO's sci-fi series Westworld takes us on an intriguing journey into an artificially intelligent future and a synthetic reimagined past, to a place where incredibly lifelike robots cater to the every whim of human guests at an old West theme park. Based on Michael Crichton's 1973 movie of the same name, the show brings together a fantastic cast including Anthony Hopkins, Jeffrey Wright and Evan Rachel Wood. So let's take a look at 10 crazy facts about HBO's Westworld. The fly that crawls across the face of Dolores Abernathy in the show's premiere is actually real. In fact, the production lists three fly wranglers in its credits. And according to actress Evan Rachel Wood, who plays Westworld's oldest host, the flies used in the scene were semi-frozen so they were in a dormant state. Then when they were placed on her face, they thawed and crawled around for 10 minutes until eventually they could fly away. However, of course, when we see the fly on her eyeball, that isn't real but was added later in post-production. Apparently, Evan Rachel Wood got so zen during filming that she actually fell asleep while she was shooting a scene with Jeffrey Wright, who plays the head of Westworld's programming division, Bernard Lowe. It happened during one of the show's analysis mode scenes, which are when the park staff question the hosts who aren't meant to remember anything about it. Wood says that filming those scenes was almost like meditating or going into a hypnotic state, as she had to really concentrate on every move she made, because each slight move or subtle facial expression would really affect how Dolores would be interpreted interpreted by both the other characters in the story and by the audience watching the show at home. Although it's a rather adult theme park compared to Disneyland, Westworld was actually inspired by the happiest place on Earth. Yes, when author Michael Crichton first saw Disneyland's animatronics, it gave him the idea to write and direct the 1970s movie Westworld, which this new series draws on. Likewise, showrunners Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy have designed their Westworld theme park to be as they see it, a fantasy world compelling enough to last generations. In other words, it's a cultural institution much like Disneyland. Indeed, one of the inspirations behind the show's character Dr. Robert Ford, who founded Westworld's Park, is Walt Disney himself, and not Jurassic Park founder John Hammond, as showrunner Lisa Joy says she's never seen the dinosaur-sized blockbuster. Which is funny because the character of John Hammond was also created by author Michael Crichton and was likened to Walt Disney. The production crew transported several big interior sets from California to Castle Valley and Dead Horse Point State Park in Utah, where they filmed a number of the show's exteriors. For example, during filming, they put the set for the train we see arriving at Westworld on a large flatbed truck and drove it up and down Route 128 in Utah. So when we see the show's characters looking out of the train window, they're actually looking out at the real Utah landscape and not a green screen. Showrunners Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy chose Utah for filming Westworld as they wanted the show and its theme park to have the feel of the vast landscape seen in director John Ford's classic westerns, which also shot in the state. However, the town at the heart of Westworld was filmed at Melody Ranch in California's Santa Clarita Valley, which has been home to many productions from the 1950s Lone Ranger TV series to Deadwood and the recent Magnificent Seven remake. According to the website Deadline, extras who appeared in Westworld were asked to sign a pretty interesting consent form. The form included possible requirements the extras might face on set, for example to have their genitals painted, or to pose on all fours while others who are fully nude ride on their back, or even to contort to form a table-like shape while being fully nude. The Hollywood website also said the extras were paid around $600 for the shoot, which is nearly four times their usual day rate. HBO responded to the claim, saying that the document was created by an outside extras casting vendor, and that it was not requested, written or approved by HBO, Warner Brothers Television or the producers. Showrunners Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy did a lot of research to create the theme park in Westworld. This included visiting Las Vegas to study how casinos are laid out, and specifically how the strip is designed to lure visitors into different experiences. Nolan and Joy also dug deep into the contemporary world of augmented reality, and explored the rules under which artificial intelligence is created and destroyed. In fact, some of the questions put to Westworld's hosts, for example whether they're lying, are based on criteria used by real-life AI researchers to decide if the AI they're creating is problematic. The conversations Nolan and Joy had with people in Silicon Valley about the current and future state of AI were mostly off the record, so they also decided to bring that notion of extreme secrecy to their show. Video games such as Red Dead Redemption, Skyrim, Grand Theft Auto and a number of games by Bioware also had a big impact on Westworld. While Jonathan Nolan is a long-time gamer, his fellow showrunner Lisa Joy isn't. So to fully understand the rules and components of gameplay, which were crucial for their show, they played a lot of Grand Theft Auto together. However, Joy's approach to the game was rather unusual and included obeying traffic signs rather than mowing people down. When it came to writing the show, the realism, immersion, violence, idea of morality as a 
of variable and the level of sophistication of non-player characters in contemporary gaming all made their mark on Westworld's theme park. Movie-wise, Ridley Scott's Blade Runner was also an influence on Westworld. In fact, Jonathan Nolan says he's watched the 1982 classic sci-fi flick countless times, as it's his brother Christopher's favourite film. And while the look of Westworld's amusement park draws on the classic westerns of director John Ford, for the control room scenes the show's cinematographer Paul Cameron went for a mix of the starkness of 2001 A Space Odyssey and A Clockwork Orange for the upper floors, and Slaughterhouse-Five for the bottom floor. Nolan has also compared the amnesia programmed into Westworld's hosts to the amnesia of Guy Pearce's character in the movie Memento, which was based on Jonathan's short story and adapted for the big screen by his brother Christopher. You can thank J.J. Abrams, co-creator of Lost and director of Star Wars The Force Awakens, for getting the ball rolling on the new Westworld series. Abrams came up with the idea to turn Michael Crichton's original movie on its head and focus a new series on the robot characters and their perspective rather than just the park's human guests. Funnily enough, this isn't the first time that Abrams has tried to get a new Westworld off the ground. Over 20 years ago, he sat down with Michael Crichton, although things didn't work out. To bring the new Westworld to life, Abrams, who was also a producer on Person of Interest, reached out to that show's creator, Jonathan Nolan, who's co-written movies such as Interstellar and The Dark Knight with his brother Christopher. And Westworld is the first collaboration between Nolan and his wife, Burn Notice producer Lisa Joy. The perforated paper rolls that spin through the saloon's player piano, performing old-timey versions of songs by the likes of Radiohead and the Rolling Stones, are real, fully functioning rolls created especially for the show by Stephen Kent Goodman, whose California-based company Novelty Rolls was given a super tight deadline to complete the highly specialised work. Jonathan Nolan has said that the player piano that features in Dr. Robert Ford's workshop, the saloon and the title sequence is a shout out to author Kurt Vonnegut, whose first novel Player Piano was published in 1952 and takes place in an almost fully mechanised near future. And not only does the instrument serve as a metaphor for Westworld's hosts, but the fact that it plays modern music in an old-fashioned style is also a reminder of just how artificial and anachronistic the show's theme park is. Now guys, what do you think of Westworld so far and what are your theories about the world the show set in? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, do comment, like and hit that subscribe button. And before you head off, I've got some really interesting videos exploring the making of movies like Ex Machina and Interstellar, so click here to check those out. Thanks for watching and see you next time, you be gay movie lovers!